In today's video, we're going to take a Lenovo M75Q-1. Now this is a AMD Ryzen, I think third gen. Uh, what I wanna do is I want to see if I can upgrade it to let's say a 5700G or 5600G or whatever that case may be, but let's find out if it's upgradable. The first thing I'm gonna have to do, of course, is take it out of this shell that I have on it for the CD-ROM DVD drive. Uh, mainly because I'm thinking about using it as a daily driver. So let's get that off first. Now if you're familiar with these, it's just a, a daisy chained USB cable for the optical and the unit. And then these two thumb screws. And then this unit should just release. Now, of course, the CD DVD drive was used. This unit is actually brand new. Well, I got it brand new. Um, and what do we got here? AMD Ryzen Pro. So let's get the back off. Looks like it's just this one screw right here. First, I guess the big thing is to find out, can you upgrade a couple year old Lenovo unit? To standard CPUs. So, of course, after that screw comes out, it is literally just a slide forward, lift out. Now, what's really nice about this machine is not only do you have NVMe support, but you can also put a two and a half inch solid state in here. Okay, so we have four screws to remove the cooling system. Let's get that done and out of the way. Also, I gotta wonder and hope if the cooling system is adequate, um, which I think they are, because I think they're both 65 watt, I believe, uh, CPUs. So there's a little lock here. I'm guessing that is a CMOS battery right here. That is part of that. This allows me to pick that fan up. That's actually kind of cool. So there's a little clip right here that allows me to press and release and bring the cooling system up. It's actually a speaker. <laughs> it's kind of neat. So let's see if I can get this off without any more screws. So there's a cooling, and you can see <laughs> that I've not really at all used this. It is brand new. I just, uh, I got it, it was a good deal and uh, I couldn't pass it up. It was just one of those things where I had to have it. And it does look like it's a proper socketed CPU, which is what the hopes were. Now let's find out if I can take this out without causing any issues. Or maybe they're in a little better than I thought they were. If you're wondering, that is the IDE to, uh, or sorry, SATA connection for the two and a half inch plugged into a ribbon cable right here. So if I have to guess, I'm going to guess it was the paste and that was what I was afraid of. Now let me check and make sure nothing bad happened here. Okay, my luck, the uh, CPU did come out perfectly fine. Um, it is just paste, so I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing that was scary about these sockets. So you have a standard socket in here. Let's find out if we can drop in a 5700 and see if it boots. Now another thing, before we do that, I don't know if this one has a RAM capability of, for upgrades. So we have a screw here, 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 and here. And I should be able to take this motherboard out. Because one, I also do not see the SATA. So, uh, that's all bolted in. So I'm not in the market to do that yet, but the solid state is right here and the RAM is right here. So this should 
actually, you don't need to take off. There we go. So, I think I've already upgraded it. Okay, so as a daily driver, I don't mind the fact that it's a, a 256. I love the uh, release clip thing here, so you can swap it over quick. Um, I think I did upgrade or it came upgraded. Nope, I upgraded it. So right now it has 16 uh, gigs of RAM in it, which is adequate. Again, I'm just thinking about using this as a daily driver. So the back plate is just as simple as laying it back on and sliding it back in place. Very simple, very easy. All you have to do is take the top cover off. So let's go get a CPU. To get the CPU off, I highly recommend putting something like this underneath and just kind of wedging it a little because you do not want to bend pins. Now see, it's just sliding, trying to, oh, that goo is really, really good actually. Can't say they haven't used good stuff on it, because they definitely did. But I'm going to use, a hopefully, what I call better. Alright. I'm just going to slide it over to where this lip is, and hopefully, I can get it off. This stuff is like glue. Oh shit, please. Well, I can vouch for Lenovo's proper uh, thermal grease because that is silver. And it stayed runny, which you do not see in a lot of computers. I don't usually like to use toilet paper for obvious reasons. It's not very good. But at the same time, when your wife takes your paper towels to use somewhere else, because you ran out <laughs> and I guess I could blame myself it just works out to do what you need to do to make other people happy what I did to uh, feel good about making sure the pins are straight was I put this back in the board one it is the easiest way to clean them without causing any damage or more mess so this is a 3400 GE so I'm just going to jump straight to a 5700 and hope that works. Also, it's a good test for a chip that I bought, used, and had to straighten the pins on. I think I did a video straightening the pins on this. Dropped right in. So I don't expect any issues because, well, I guess I could. Because uh, maybe the bias ain't going to accept it. And if it don't, then I'm going to have to start the machine back up and... Uh, do a flash on the bias to accept from this chip to that chip. So let's find out if we need to do that. And for now, I am just going to lay this down. So I have some sort of heat spreader. That's locked on. Let's get this speaker plugged in so I can tell if something bad's happening. All right, and let's get the fan plugged in. Make sure there's nothing weird there. No point in putting the cooler on if you don't actually put the fan on. There we go, we have fan. Will it remember? Will it work? I don't know. Really throw some nice air. And I don't think it should be on like that. So it's not cycle booting. I don't have a red light either. But no video. I'm going to check and see if the display port cable is needed. I'm going to let it run for a few seconds or a few a minute or two and see if it actually does any cycle booting. If not, i got to pop the old chip back in and do a bias flash if that sort of thing exists and i'm not wasting my time with this okay guys i uh it's hours later i've done some research and apparently because this is a gen 1 there is a m75q gen 2. well the gen 1 has no support for anything over the 3400 GE. Sucks, but that is what it is. Not that the 3400 GE for day-to-day -day use was not a issue. I just wanted to try and get the best out of the little system. 
that I could. Anyway, that solves that and yeah, I'm still posting a video even though the product failed to do what I wanted it to do. But I get to do this so you don't have to and you don't pay for my mistakes. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope this helps someone out there. Till next time, game over.